Hello my loves, it's Haley Reese and for today's video I'm going to be giving you guys exactly what you're asking for and that is another paranormal story time video. Ever since I posted my first Paranormal Storytime video, I have been getting endless amounts of requests for me to continue making them. So I decided I will give you guys exactly what you're asking for and share with you another story that is extremely, extremely frightening. But before I get into this video, I want to share a quick little disclaimer with you guys and let you know that if you do not believe in anything paranormal or that any of this could really happen to somebody, then I'm absolutely not here to convince you. I am not here to try to change your beliefs or your thoughts or even try to convince you that I'm telling the truth. I'm simply just sharing one of my many, many paranormal experiences with you and you are free to take from it exactly what you'd like. If you guys are new to my channel, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it if you do. I post a ton of videos and I really don't want you guys to miss when I upload, so go ahead and do that. If you guys want to hear what happened when I was around people messing around with a Ouija board and it went horribly, terribly, frighteningly wrong, then sit back, relax, maybe turn the light on and let's get into this story time. Ever since I was a small child, my family had always told me not to mess with a Ouija board. My entire family, I mean, I can't really say my entire family, but my grandparents, my mom, my dad, me, we all believe in paranormal activity. We believe in God, we believe in angels, we believe in spirits, we believe in fairies, we believe in everything to do with the other side. And so ever since I was small, I was made very, very aware of the dangers surrounding the Ouija board and that it is not something to be messed around with. Actually guys, I will give you a quick little story time within a story time. My grandma had messed around with it with a couple of people within my family, a couple of girls, and my grandpa was outside working on his car. When he came inside, he asked the Ouija board because they were all telling him, this is real, this is real, we're really talking to someone. He said, if you are so smart, how many screws do I have in my pocket? And the Ouija board guessed to the T. And this freaked him out severely and he said, okay, it's time to go. I'm going to drive you ladies home. And the Ouija board said, Barry leaves, Candace stays. Barry is my grandpa, Candace is my grandma. Well, my grandpa was not having that. He made my grandma wake all the kids up so that they could drive these ladies home and get back to the house. They closed out the board and they never wanted to play with it again. Now, like I said, I was always told not to play with it because as you guys should know, and if you don't, listen to me very, very clearly, Ouija boards are not something to play around with. More often than not, something very negative comes through the board and it can turn extremely scary and change your life forever. This story is actually about my friend whose life was changed forever because of a Ouija board, so trust me guys, it is not something to be messed around with. One night, me and a bunch of my girlfriends were having a big slumber party and one of the craziest things that most young girls like to do is kind of ghost hunt, tell ghost stories, or mess around with a Ouija board. All of my friends wanted to play with a Ouija board. I absolutely did not. Like I said, I was pre-warned not to play with one, but I did want to see what would happen if somebody did. So I told them, you guys can play and I'm going to sit in the room and just watch. It seemed harmless enough. I didn't think anything crazy was going to happen. I thought someone would come through, they would talk, and I would get to watch. So they called me a chicken, they called me a baby, but I didn't really care. I felt like I was being the safe one, and they were going to play with it. So they start out the board, and they're asking pretty normal questions. You know, is anybody here? And for the first little while, the board didn't move at all. Nothing happened. They were just sitting there, and everyone's kind of like, okay, like maybe this isn't real. And my friend Mona was like, guys, I play with this all the time. Trust me, something will come. We just need to be patient. And sure enough, after about the 10th time they asked if something was there, so quickly it moved to yes. So the board was in action and they were ready to start talking. So since Mona was the only one out of them that had actually played with a Ouija board before and it was her Ouija board, she was the one who was going to lead in the questions. So she said, who's here? And all of a sudden it spelt out a name. It spelt L-I-S-A. And Mona's face just drops. And everyone's like, what? What? Who's Lisa? Who's Lisa? And Mona goes, I think it's my grandma. So out loud, Mona says, are you my grandmother? 
and right away it moves to yes. So obviously Mona is ecstatic. She looks at all of us, she tells us that her grandma has never come through and all the times that she's played on a Ouija board, she has never had somebody come through who was related to her. So she was pretty excited. So Mona's going on and on and on and talking with this person that she believes is her grandmother and things seem to be going okay. But something that I did not know at 13 and none of us knew when we were playing with this is the fact that when something negative comes through, it can pretend to be something that it is not. And we learned very, very quickly that this was not Mona's grandmother that she was talking to. So when Mona's grandmother had passed away, Mona had told us that nobody really knew the cause of death. She had passed away in her sleep, but she wasn't very old at all. And the doctors couldn't really figure out a cause of death. So Mona decided to ask her grandmother what had happened and why she had passed away so suddenly. And this is where things took a turn for the worse. So as Mona's asking, you know, how, how she passed away and what had happened, the Ouija board and the energy in the room shifts on a dime. And she spells out, I was never alive. I was never alive but I mean at 13 we weren't thinking much of it other than okay like that's weird and Mona goes yes grandma you were alive and so quickly she spells out I am not your grandmother and right away I swear I swear to you guys the room turned freezing cold and I got this feeling in my stomach of like I'm going to throw up like this is not right and I tell them guys close it out I don't want to play this anymore and they're like you're not even playing it like don't you can't say anything and I'm like guys trust me I have a very very bad feeling about this I don't want to play anymore I don't want you guys to play anymore let's do something else but they were so dead set on continuing playing and my dumb ass was so dead set on seeing what was gonna happen even though I wanted them to stop, even though I was afraid that I stayed in the room and I continued to watch them talking to it. And all of a sudden, uh, guys, I can't even like talk about this, it freaks me out. All of a sudden, Mona's nose starts to bleed. And everyone stands up really, really quickly from playing with the board and they made a very, very massive error. And that was the fact that they did not properly close out the board, that they simply stood up and they simply quit playing the game. So we all go upstairs, everyone's super freaked out. We don't know who they were talking to and Mona's nose is bleeding and everything is acting very, very weird. And all of a sudden, Mona's little sister starts screaming and crying in her room. And when the mom runs upstairs to check on her, the three-year-old girl wouldn't say anything, but she was staring in her room, terrified, absolutely bawling her eyes out. And none of us could figure out why or what had happened, but I truly believe to this day that that had to do with whatever had been unleashed into Mona's house now. So that night, we kind of continue the slumber party. After a while, we all forget what had happened with the Ouija board. We all moved on from it. But like I said, it hadn't been properly closed out. And as we're all sleeping, we are up in Mona's room and Mona's parents' room was actually on the main floor. So her and her, si her, and her sister's room were upstairs. There was a bathroom, there was an office, and on the main floor off of the living room was the parents' room. We're all up in Mona's room and we're eating a bunch of junk food and we're all just hanging out up there and we hear Mona's name yelled. So we all look at each other and Mona's like, hold on, I'll go see what my mom needs. And as Mona comes upstairs, she has this like white as a ghost look on her face and she's like my mom is sleeping and we're like what do you mean your mom is sleeping like we all very very clearly heard Mona's name yelled from downstairs it was a woman's voice and we all assumed that it was obviously her mother calling her but her mom was completely asleep she was absolutely dead asleep 
So we all start to freak out and we remember the Ouija board and obviously we're a bunch of 13 year old girls in a bedroom freaking out, you know, not really like knowing what to do. It's very easy when you're 13 to scare yourselves anyways and this was just a very scary situation in general. So we're all very, very freaked out. And the next day, I go home, I leave, nothing happens to me after that. The other two girls go home, they leave, nothing happens to them after that. And my friend Mona had something in her house for years to come. We stayed friends until about 16 years old, I would say, maybe 17, but more so 16. And Mona would always tell me, how things were never the same after that day. She would see shadows walking in her room, she would hear her name called by that same woman, and nobody in the house was ever calling her name. She would wake up with nosebleeds when she never had nosebleeds before. She would wake up in different parts of the house and have these awful night terrors. She would tell me about some of them, and guys, I can't even explain to you like how traumatizing some of these nightmares that she would have are and how scared she was it was just absolutely terrifying like the dreams that she would have and honestly that's kind of where my story ends there is nothing that has ever stopped for her I the last I spoke to her like I said was at 16 for the few years that went on after she had played with the Ouija board that night it, it was just non-stop. Things never stopped for her. It's just, it's so scary and I always think about the fact that what if I had played? Like, these things are not things to be messed around with, guys. Like, I am telling you, the way that the energy in that room changed, the way that her nose started to bleed and her sister started to scream in her room and the voice that we heard call Mona's name that night and her mom was dead asleep. Like, I know that this isn't some crazy thing. She wasn't possessed, nothing nothing crazy happened, but this is the reality of Ouija boards. This is the type of thing that you can bring on. The shadows that she experiences, the night terrors, the waking up and seeing people standing in her room, hearing her name called, and nobody is there. These are things that have happened ever since that night. Ever since she thought she was speaking to her grandmother and later found out that she wasn't, she has been haunted. And it's, it's very, very scary. It's it's not something to be messed around with. I know it sounds like a good idea. I know it sounds fun. I know it's intriguing because even when I was in the room watching it, it's so interesting watching this happen. It's so interesting seeing that you can communicate like that. But I'm telling you guys from the bottom of my heart, it is not something to be messed with. It is not a joke. And it is something that is just it can bring on the darkest and scariest things and for my friends that's exactly what they did. I hope that you guys enjoyed this story time video. If you guys want to see some more paranormal stories or hear about the haunted house that I grew up in, I have stories on deck. I have so many paranormal stories. Things like that have just seemed to follow me around. But I thought that I would start with this story because I know a lot of people want to play with Ouija boards and I'm trying to just get the message out there that they are not something to be joking around with. They are not a joke. They are a very serious thing and they are not something that you want to have go wrong. Believe me. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I post a ton of videos and you don't want to miss when I upload. And please give this video a big thumbs up. Like I always say, I would really, really appreciate it if you do. Remember my loves, don't play with Ouija boards and do all things with kindness. Until next time, love you.